Oh my gosh, no way. <sighs> Hello and welcome, or welcome back if you're returning. My name is Claire, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, or dogs, or life, then you should subscribe because that's what we do here. If you don't mind giving this video a like, that really helps us combat the algorithm. We're going for it. I do not mean to diminish our accomplishments, but until we identify the ones who ordered the fire set, our work is far from finished. Between the various conservative and religious factions in Ishgard, I dare say there's no shortage of parties who would like to see the status quo preserved. Do any likely suspects spring to mind? Far too many to count. He lives. Thank goodness. Lord Commander, your Thank wounds. Thank the twelve. <laughs> Are healing well. Thank you. Time is of the essence. Lest we forget, these men would sooner put their own city to the torch than see it change. When our enemies learn that we have apprehended their arsonist, there is no telling how they will react. Lord Commander, an armed mob has seized control of the vault. And now we know. Tell us what happened, sir. Spare no detail. We were directing refugees into the Basilica, as you ordered. When all of a sudden, men brandishing weapons were all around us. It happened so fast, my lord. We had no time to respond. They've taken the refugees hostage and barricaded themselves inside the vault. And they sent you to deliver their demands. They, the true brothers of the faith, demand that a conclave to select the next archbishop be held forthwith. Furthermore, they, they declare that you, Lord Commander, are guilty of patricide and high treason, and that you must surrender yourself at once to receive of the Fury's judgment. Ridiculous! I mean, do they honestly think that executing Sir Emmerich would change anything? That the truth will somehow die with him? These people just love fighting and killing. These fundamentalists rage against the passing of the old ways. Unable to accept there can be no going back. Given the fanciful nature of their demands, a peaceful resolution does not seem likely. If the hostages are to be rescued, it will be by force, I fear. Agreed. Lucia, take a contingent of knights and establish a perimeter outside the entrance. At once, Lord Commander. Hilda, I need your people out in force throughout the broom. When word spreads of the situation, the friends and family of the hostages may try to take matters into their own hands. I will not give these militants more targets. I shall lead the assault on the vault. Master Alphano, can I count on the support of the Scions? Of course. <laughs> Just kidding. I guess there's four. I don't know. We are in your debt. I shall join you as well, Lord Commander. Your assistance is most welcome, Lord Atwarel. To arms, then, friends. Time is against us. Yeah, here we go. I love beating on the uh, beating on people of the church. Listen well. We will enter the basilica silently via this gate. According to our latest reports. There are at least six hostages being held within. The numbers of readiness of the true brothers of the faith are unknown. I have told one claimed to have served under Thornton the seventh. Might the same be true of the rest. Given the swiftness with which they seized control of the vault, I think it highly likely yes, which means that they may well possess the knowledge required to turn the building's defenses against us. Be that as it may, we have no choice but to press on. Lord Arturiel, you are a brave man and true. And none would dare question your honor if you chose not to risk your life in this endeavor. Are you certain you wish to join us? I am no stranger to the battlefield, Sir Emmerich. 
My arm will not falter. My shield will not break. Hello, and I ask my witness. We all bring these fanatics to justice. Justice? <laughs> well said, my lord. Rescue the hostages. Oh my gosh. Do we see that present check goes unnoticed? Plus, come, we must secure the entrance. Okay. So, Simeon, odd. So, this is indeed the work of the Archbishop's former servants. Oh dear god, they've sounded the alarm. I mean, they really want him dead anyway, so... You underestimate me! Maybe it was too fast for me. Come on, you got these who are all like super tall with long legs. <laughs> they wait up. Sir Sevianon, lay down your arms and release the hostages, and you will be shown mercy. I give you my word. Ha! The word of a heretic and kinslayer. I would sooner trust a dragon. Activate the knights. We shall show the he hostages the same mercy he showed the archbishop. <gasps> oh, they really mean the knights. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Unlike you, Sir Emmerich, I am a man of honor. By my hand, you shall receive of the Fury's judgment. So it is to be a trial, then. Lord Artoel, Burr, leave us and save the hostages. I will deal with Sir Simeonard. Simeonard. Oh no. You better win. Oh, hello, Nay. Render us unto your judgment. Right, raise up the righteous and cast down. A few minutes later. <laughs> It was a little bit. Where is he? Where is he? Come no closer. You have nowhere to run. Release the girl and surrender. Surrender to whom? The blasphemer who throws wide the gates to our enemy? Who breaks bread with him and calls him brother? Ungodly swine! I would sooner die than surrender to you. What is up with all these evil priests and bishops and such? Is it godly to spill the blood of an innocent child? To burn the homes of your brothers? Tell me, priest, is that godly? Do not speak to me of godliness, heathen! Your father's blood is on your hands, as is hers! That's pretty awful. Get her his job. <gasps> oh no, the dragon. What? But I... <laughs> it's an angel. The Daphne! Well met, Knight. Mayhap I chose an inopportune moment? Not at all. Pray forgive us this most unworthy reception. We are honored to have you with us, and right glad of your aid. Fortune delivered the child unto me. I had but to receive her. 
Thank you for saving me. Thou art welcome, child. Forget about everybody else. I know, right? What timing? There they are. What'd they do to him? Push him over the edge? That's what I would have done. <laughs> Never did I think to be indebted to so unexpected a savior. But full glad am I to be so. Friend of Izel, warrior of warriors, I had hoped to meet with thee. I bear a message from my sire. From Freysfelder? Upon returning to our lands, Nidhogg's shade did sing unto his brood, and they for skies unknown did then take wing. This thou must know, for your fates are inextricably bound. What of Estinian? Is he truly lost to us? Such matters are beyond my ken. I but bear my father's words. Take from them what thou wilt. Fare you well, mortals. So it is as they say, then. A great white dragon swooped down from the heavens to rescue an innocent child. A most unexpected turn of events, but not an unwelcome one. The people will not soon forget this day. Yet how will they choose to remember it, Sir Emmerich? And will these events serve to bring man and dragon closer together, or drive a deeper wedge between brothers? After a thousand years, the world these men once knew is changing, and with ungentle swiftness to boot. Though their actions are misguided, their sentiments are only to be expected. You may be sure that others will rally to their cause. I share your desire for a lasting peace with the Jovanians, I do. But I would not see it built on the bones of our countrymen, nor on our own. I see much of horsifying you, and I could not bear to mourn the passing of another son. So sad. So sweet. Lord Edmund. Uh I'm not sure what that was about. Was that guy uh, jealous? Or was he just kind of an agreeance? Or is he like the whole of the dragons? I am so confused by that response. This has been a day of surprises, has it not? Tis but a pity that Alfno could not stay longer. Yes, I think it's fair to say that she timed her departure rather less well than her arrival. Well, time scarcely does it justice, but one moment later would have been a moment too late. Let us pray that the Ishgardians who yet harbor doubts will take these events to heart and accept the truth of Sir Emmerich's words. 
Well, tis only meet that I inform Tataru of what has occurred here. If you have need of me, I shall be at Fort Top Manor. Allow me to accompany you. Tataru would never forgive me if I left for the Rising Stones without saying goodbye. <laughs> True. Better go see the potato. A moment, Burr. I wish a word. Tell me, does that quit seem quite well to you? He held it out of the vault. He got on well enough with Hilda. I'm not sure how to put it into words, but uh, that's what I'm going with. He seems off. <laughs> so you sense it too. A subtle change, imperceptible to most. <laughs> there you go, Lee. <laughs> I myself did not notice it at first, but upon a closer examination, I saw that his etheric flow had been irreparably disrupted. As a result, I strongly suspect that his ability to manipulate ether has been compromised. Simply put, Thancred may no longer be able to wield magics. It would do much to explain why he chose to remain within the wilderness instead of se seeking us out. He would have been compelled to rely solely on traditional methods of travel, significantly prolonging his journey. And when he learned that a nearby beast tribe was making preparations to summon a primal, it may well have seemed more sensible to wait. But this is still little more than the speculation. Until I have proof, pray speak no word of it. <laughs> no words? Easy. <laughs> right, then. I should be on my way. Kral may have charmed Master Matoya for now, but who can say how long it will last? That Vidofnir should chance to arrive even as the girl fell. Truly, I could not have planned it better myself. Ah, good. We were afraid you might have left. A shield, my lord? Fit for a true knight. An expression of our gratitude to you and yours. Long overdue. But now we have our own shield. Tis an honor. <laughs> but there is something else I would discuss ere you part. Something which cannot leave this room. My father will soon step down as head of our house. Sir Emmerich was not the only one to fall under suspicion following the death of the Archbishop. There are some who believe my father complicit in a coup d'etat. Thus he intends to renounce his title to absolve our house of suspicion and secure the support of our peers. Surely there must be another way to convince houses Durandere and Zamail. So I said to him. Alas, he will not budge. Ever since I was a child, I knew that I would one day succeed my father. The thought of it filled me with pride. Yet once I learned the day was at hand, my heart was filled with naught but dread. Our legacy is built upon the lies of our forefathers. In accepting this title, am I not perpetuating this injustice? All right, now I Why understand. should I become the next count? This is why he made that weird face. Okay. You sound just like him. I, I suspect that is what Horshafon would have know. said. To aid those in need. When you look on that shield, I trust you will remember his words. And should I once more find my resolve wavering, I ask that you show me the way. You are a sister to Horshafon. Will you be a sister to me as well? Excuse you, we were going to be married. Come, Emanelaine. There's much to be done. For Father, and for Sir Emmerich, and for Ishgard.
<sighs> to think we share the same blood. Pray excuse us. <laughs> Those were the days of promises and vows, of tentative first steps into an uncertain future. A future shaped by the choices we made in ways we could never have foreseen. Born of good and evil, of light and darkness, and shepherded by our hand. Be it for weal, or be it for woe. So the memoirs of Count Edward de Fortal. Heaven's word as goes light, so goes darkness. That's amazing. <laughs> this is thy proof. The Garud Oracles. Apocrypha. Apo Apocrypha? I'm not sure what that word is. How to say that word. <laughs> it is a truth long forgotten. A tale of the beginning and of the path we have been set upon. You. Oh man, not this guy oh again! Oh man, not this guy again! Our fates were ordained long ago, Archon. The Guardians are no exception, nor the Triad. You know what must be done. Well, hello. I know. Everyone has their orders. The masks will attack as soon as all units are in position. The Imperials will know where hit them. <laughs> I fear it will be bloody. <laughs> That's a great angle. By Ralgar, it had better be. We cannot stay here forever, Ida. We have other responsibilities. I know full well what my responsibilities are, and I mean to fulfill them, every one. Half an hour, I've been looking all over for you. We've received news regarding Philemon, Poor Boulder, and Colton. Really? Has something happened? No, no, it's nothing bad. Quite the opposite. In fact, it seems that once they learned the Scion's good name had been restored, they boarded the next ship bound for Limsa They should be arriving any moment now. It's easy to forget how useful Link Pearls are, isn't it? When they work, I mean. And you don't mind being spied on. Quite. But what wonderful news. To think that our reunion is close at hand. A pleasure to see you too, Alphador. <laughs> ah, thank you. And Kral, what brings the two of you here? Kral and I have been looking into how we might track down Mithilia. And we may just have found the answer. <laughs> Hooray! Burr, when you were fleeing Ulda with Mithilia, you said that Heinolin spoke to her shortly before you parted ways, yes? Well, assuming that is true, and I see no reason to suspect that it is not, it seems reasonable to conclude that Heidelin commanded her to remain behind. That is to say, the Mother Crystal directly interceded to guide Rupilia. Admittedly, this is all still quite hypothetical, but I propose that such intervention, however subtle, must surely leave some residual trace, a lingering disturbance in the ether, or ripple, if you will. In order to establish the existence of such ripples, of course, we will require suitable data. Fortunately, I know where such data can be found. The battleground where Bird found the ultimate weapon, and the site of my personal ignominy. Ignominy? That's a word. Twas there that Heidelar intervened to shield her from the magic I invoked. Kryle and I will infiltrate the castrum and analyze the Easter therein. Ether. <laughs> Easter. The two of you? Alone? 
I like his boots. I have proven a knack for subterfuge, and I am confident there will be sufficient nooks and crannies in which to hide Kryl while the patrols pass. Besides, if you and Burr come along, who will see to Flimelin's grand homecoming? When you put it like that, very well, I will trust in your plan. I know not whether this data will yield a means to find McPhilia, but it will at the very least eliminate another avenue of inquiry. Tataru and I will return to the Rising Stones and make preparations for our comrades' return. Might I impose upon you to meet them at the Lomans and Docks? Then I shall see the four of you at the Rising Stones. Safe travels. Look, she's right there. Would you look at that? Hey, mama. Hey, little mama. Oh, Burr, how have you been? Come here, let me have a good look at you. Do you like my helmet? <laughs> Thank the Twelve, one hears the strangest tales in foreign lands. I worried about you all every day. We would have sent word sooner, but the Braves afforded us no opportunity. When they fell upon us in the market, it was all we could do to escape. Tataru found her way to you, of course, but we were forced to seek shelter aboard a Hanish vessel. Hanish. It pained us not being there when you needed us most, but we made the most of it, didn't we, Kultra? Studied and trained from dusk till dawn, we did. We would have sent word sooner, but we knew not whom to trust and with the vast distance. But those dark days are behind us at last. I shall be glad indeed to return home and speak with my daughter. Uh, about that. <laughs> what do you mean she's missing? How could you let this happen? Okay, lady. <laughs> Forgive me. I, I am sure you are doing everything in your power to find her. As Thangrid must be. He watched over her from first, from the first, long before me. And he will watch over her to the last. I shall pray for her safe return and busy myself in the meantime. For a certainty, there is much and more to be done. The braves may have bloodied us, but the path remains and we shall not be swayed from it. Aye, that's the spirit. To the scions and a long overdue reunion. Huzzah! Well, there you have it. To the rising stones. Well done, sir. And with that, I believe we are ready to proceed. Let us be about our business, then. The next patrol may not be so credulous. <laughs> Why must you be so disappointingly brusque? You're not at all as Minfilia described, you know. I don't think you favoured me with so much as a single compliment since we set out. Tell me, did your time in the wilderness sap you of all your charm, or are you holding it in reserve for your beloved? This is neither the time nor the place. Yeah, he seems very, very, uh, very serious. Well, call me old-fashioned, <laughs> but when I'm risking life and limb infiltrating an Imperial Castrum, I like to be sure of my comrade's motivations. I mean, you can't blame her, because he was possessed by our good friend Lollabred for a while. I see now where Alphino gets it from. Minfilia is dear to me, it is true, but not in the way you think. Fifteen years passed, when she was still but a child, there was an incident at a parade. A gubu broke free of its fetters and ran amok through the streets of Ulda. Had I been more attentive, I could have prevented it. But I was distracted, and her father was killed. I feared she would never recover. But in the years that followed, she showed herself to be more resilient than I had ever imagined. And when she learned of her gift, she did not flinch from the responsibility. 
but sought to guide others on the path. She touched the hearts of all around her. Mine, Louis Soir, every science. In those dark days following the calamity, she was our guiding light, our hope for a brighter future. She had so many dreams, and I would give anything to make them come true. My apologies. I can see she means the world to you. I did not mean to pick at old scars. No harm done, I assure you. But fair is fair, my lady. What is Minfilia to you? You mean you don't know? Only my dearest friend. When I finally emerged from my torpor, I learned that Neri a day had passed without her asking after me. She never gave up hope. And neither will I. Then for Minfilia's sake, let us pray that these vestiges of Hydaelyn's intervention will lead us to her. to be home again. To think that everyone is waiting for us just beyond those doors. Friends and family with whom we have shared so much. Gods help me, but the older I get, the more sentimental I become. Come, let us not keep them waiting. It's been so long since I've seen them all like this. Too long. Twas the chaos born of my foolish ambition which forced them to flee. Though they are returned, there are others yet missing, others whom we cannot forsake. We'll find them, Alphino. I know we will. Minfilia, Ida, Pumilimo, every last one. And when they walk through those doors, we'll be here to welcome them home. With me at the head of the queue, of course. That crit and Kryle contacted us a short while ago. It would seem that their foray into Castro Meridianum bore fruit. They asked that we rendezvous with them in Ishtola in Idleshire, where they will share their findings. Rude though it is to depart without speaking to the guest of honor, I expect she will forgive me if I return with her daughter. Oh my goodness. I'd heard tales of these squirrel suits, but I have not yet seen one in the wild. Hello. My apologies, I see I am the last to arrive. So, what news have you for us? Well, as we postulated, there were indeed what appeared to be the remnants of an unexplained disturbance in the ether, at the scene of the Ultima Weapon's destruction, a ripple at odds with the presiding pattern. Though faint, the waveforms bore a strong resemblance to those observed following the destruction of the Isle of Val, when I believe Hydaelyn shielded me with the blessing of life. To confirm our findings, we paid a visit to the Silda Aqueducts. There we detected the same waveform, but orders of magnitude larger, as one would expect of a more recent disturbance. Hydaelyn. There is no other explanation. Or is there? But there is more. When I studied the site where Ishtola used to flow, it appeared that not two but three beings had been affected. Yet unlike Ishtola and Thengrid, there was no trail to follow. Our unknown third party was simply there, and then not there. Uh oh, she obliterated somebody? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Now recall your visions of a vast crystal floating in a sea of ether. 
Though this too is but a theory, studies of gifted subjects suggest that when communing with Eidolon, we briefly leave our bodies behind. So let us consider the facts. 1. Eidolon interceded. 2. A third being was caught in East Trilo's flow and vanished without a trace. And 3. Eidolon may have the capacity to summon the consciousness of gifted individuals to her side. You are implying, I take it, that Heidelin guided Mephilia into the compass of my magic, that she might summon her body and soul onto the ethereal sea? In which case, we must needs continue our search there for a blessing. The means to do so already exists. I speak of the Anta Tower, a Charlian construction conceived to provide scholars a vantage point over the ethereal sea. Though I know not where its entrance lies, we need only ask its last custodian, a contrary old crone who, for another blessing, refused to join the exodus. Master Matoya was the keeper of the Anta Tower? I had no idea. Then our course is clear. We must petition her aid once again. She's gonna get sick of seeing our faces. to the friendly frogs. Oh, what a surprise. Well, what secrets have you come to extract from me this time? Ah, though it pains me to admit it, your words strike close to the mark. We humbly ask that you grant us entry to the Anta Tower, that we might use it to seek a friend who we believe has been transported to the Ethereal Sea. And who told you I could do such a thing, I wonder? <laughs> I wonder, indeed. The tower was abandoned to its magical keepers 15 years ago. They have the run of the place now. If that is no deterrent to you, then by all means. Is that all? I felt sure you would seek to dissuade us from our course, given your role as custodian. Role? Hardly. The forum foisted the title on me. During the exodus, every entrance to the Antitara was sealed save one. Oh, how convenient. My role consists of making sure no one with ill intent sneaks through it. Such was the forum's final order to me. Well, I can remove the wards right now. Will you be going or not? We will, Master Matoya. We will do whatever it takes to find Moonphilia. We'll see about that. What does that mean? You, Baldician girl, you're staying here with me. I need your help to restore the wards to their original state. The rest of you can go, on the condition that you clean up the mess in the tower. If you encounter any unruly familiars, you have to tend to them. Those are my terms, and I'll heal no argument. <laughs> yes? Ma'am. Well, it appears the mistress has spoken. Lead the way, Burr. I love her, she's so funny. The Anta Tower, now accessible. Oh my gosh, it's Kingdom Hearts. <gasps> Is this it? Is this the last one? Oh my gosh, no way. <gasps> we got Calcabrina. Adorable dolls, terrible dolls. Yep, ho ho. Oh my goodness. Freaky. Uh, 
I need to play more though. Oh my gosh, she's so freaky. <laughs> so bizarre. But we did it. <laughs> no big baby's gonna take us out today. Through time and space hast thou journeyed unto me, as I knew thou wouldst. We are the word of the mother. We, who were once called Minfilia. Oh my gosh, what is this? Minfilia. Much time hath passed for thee since the bloody banquet. Since, since I hearkened to her word. Mother, Hydelin guided me towards Yishtola and Thancred that I might be swept up in their flow and delivered unto the ethereal sea. There, adrift and alone, her voice silent once more. Oh, that's... I prayed for those we had lost, for those we can yet save. To her I would make an offering. We speak now with one voice, one will, one word. Unto thee we bequeath the most precious of gifts, the truth which lieth at the heart of this world. Thus do we beseech thee once more. Hear Feel. Think. Before there was life in the depths of the ethereal sea, Light and dark did once dwell as one. But the darkness coveted power, and the balance was broken. Thus was I forced to banish him unto the distant heavens, to forever remain apart, a moon bound. In sundering the star did we cry out, and the barriers twixt planes chance to falter. Across ten and three were we then divided. Reflections of the source, each possessed of a shard. Zodiac longeth to be made whole. For his restoration, for his resurrection, his servants labor without cease. They seek to tear down the barriers which surround the source. Thus do they rejoice in their ardor, in your calamities, for each marks a rejoining.
Seven times have they succeeded. Seven times hath the darkness grown stronger. Seven times have I failed. That's so sad. <laughs> the Asians cannot be suffered to continue. This, this is my final. The crystal's power is all but spent. With what remains, I will return you to the shore of the ethereal sea. Blessed children, go forth and seek. Seek. Everybody's You've like, had another vision, haven't you? So, what happened? <laughs> Let us return to Master Matoya's cave. Everyone will wish to hear what you saw. Still in one piece, are we? Well... Did you learn anything? The word of the mother? I'm not sure I understand. Nor am I. Kryle? As unbelievable as it sounds, I see no reason to doubt her. The words tale. No one was more sensitive to the will of Hydaelyn than Menphilia. And if Hydaelyn has grown so weak that she can barely make herself heard, it is not hard to see why Menphilia, having joined with her, might struggle to maintain her own form. What? Why would she need to maintain her own form? Are you saying... Are you saying she's gone? But that cannot be! Not now. Not after all we have accomplished. We were meant to wash her in the dawn's light together. She threw herself on the fire to fuel your dawn's light, boy. You'll just have to usher it in on your own. Must you be so ungentle? Tell me about the scions, boy. Oh, poor Alfie. The... the that the scions of the seventh dawn lay before Aeolsia's salvation. Whenever the realm is threatened, be it by Primal, Asian, Guardian, or any other, we take up arms in her defense, that all in Aeolsia may live to see a brighter tomorrow. And that's very noble of you. But in chasing after these lofty goals of yours, you seem to have lost sight of some basic truths. To win a war. You must be willing to do whatever it takes. To fight. To kill. And if necessary, to die. The path you've chosen is paved with the dead. Walk it with your eyes open. Or not at all. Uh, 
I know the truth of which you speak, and have from the first. If the Asians will go to any length to resurrect their god, then we must needs be as committed to our cause, to unmask them and their schemes, and to crush them both utterly. Come, there is much to be done. Yes, of course. Tancred, wait! No. No, this is all wrong. She, she's not coming back, is she? She did what she thought was best. What now? Uh, no, no, no. I know that, I do. To give all for her beliefs was ever her way. So will we, as we must. What greater calling would there be than to stand against the dark as defenders of the light? And yet, where does it end? The sacrifice, the loss. Hey all so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right, from uh, all of us to all of you. <laughs> Bye.